Hello again guys and welcome back to another House of Devlin video. I'm Big Al Devlin. Thank you for tuning in. Now this video is going to be a bit different to the ones that I've been filming uh, most recently which has been about Nordic Paganism. Now it's still going to have Nordic Paganism in it and it is about Nordic Paganism and how it can influence your views on the world um, for the better ultimately. Um, and how it is superior to a lot of the views that are currently existing in the world. It's not saying that my religion or belief system is better, but, you know, it is better than a lot of what is out there already at the moment. And I endeavour and I hope that the people watching this who are interested, even just partly, just deep, dig that a little bit deeper into the faith and into the belief systems that I'm teaching on here on YouTube um, um, and and just listen and make up their own mind. But I hope I'm obviously um, I'm fairly sure that if you listen to me um, and listen to the words that I put across, the arguments, so on and so forth, that myself and other people who of similar minds put across, that you probably be nodding your head in agreement to what we're talking about. Now, this video in particular is about uh, is a response video ultimately to a channel called Sigrid's Equinox, which will become a featured channel here on uh, the House of Devlin. Um, as soon as I get downstairs to my PC, I will put it on there. Um, Sigrid's Equinox is another paganistic um, focused. Uh, channel i suppose but it's a bit like my my own channel it's varied as well it has other aspects to it it's not just about paganism um the young lady on who runs the channel um is incredibly well researched incredibly well spoken and has very balanced and very well put across arguments even if you don't agree with her words which i can't see the reasons why you wouldn't agree with her if I'm honest, the only reason that you would not agree with her, in my personal opinion, on the videos that I've watched so far, um, I've not watched them all, but the ones that I've watched so far, is out of ignorance, she speaks the truth. And the truth is the truth. Now, the particular video that I'm going to be referencing and linking in Nordic Paganism and all the rest of it as well, and also just be offering my support to her viewpoints that she makes on that video is the one called About Feminism. Please visit her channel, please watch the video. She's actually, believe it or not, I don't think it's for this video, but for, for one or two of her videos at least, she's suffered strikes from YouTube, which ultimately mean, I think if you get three strikes, you're off YouTube. Your channel's destroyed. You can no longer come back on and produce video content for people to watch. Now that's like basically <laughs> the secret police in many ways. What happened to freedom of speech? What happened to having a point of view? It doesn't matter that whether or not YouTube agree with your views. Um, um, obviously they didn't. They didn't agree with her views or they saw them as being perhaps too extreme. But what she spoke from what I've seen so far and the videos that I've seen has been not only truthful, but proven. She comes with evidence. You can't argue it. And even if you do, because there's always debate. That's the beauty of this world. You can always debate points. We all have our own minds. We're all individuals. We all have our own way of seeing things, which means as a result, when there's you know, six, seven eight, nine billion people in the world, however many people there are in the world now, there's not going to be one single topic that we all agree on. Okay, it's as simple as that. We're not all going to agree on the same things. But it's important that in at least within the civilized world that we that we agree on the most important points and we agree on mass. And and for and for the right reasons. Um and she puts across on her video and as I say, it's called About Feminism, that basically, that the feminists, I mean, feminism is great in, in, in its origins, in its, in, in its uh, concept, in its derivation, and in its original execution. It's fantastic. Equality for women. 
no inequality between the genders. That is correct. Feminism on that side of things is, should be there. If I was to quote now the Nordic paganistic belief systems, okay, regardless of whether you're religious or not, I am. It's my part of my belief systems. I developed these views before my paganistic, uh, before I became a pagan. But the the paganistic belief system that I have now, and the way that I see the world after my, you know, my basically the day I died and came back, that. The way I see things now is just more so than what it was before. It's, I'm, I'm more clear. I've got clarity and I've got the strength to stand up and say, you know, I, I might get struck by YouTube for making this video also. But I'm here standing by um, a fellow pagan, a fellow individual, a fellow human being who has the correct viewpoints on, on feminism at the moment. Uh, she's from a different country, I assume. Um, I think she speaks Spanish in the video, but it's subtitled, so I assume she's from Spain. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there, um, Sigrid. But but what's important to to note is, despite our differences, we've still come to the same viewpoints, and part of that will have been our shared belief system, the Nordic paganistic belief system. And if you go watch my video before, um, that was based on the origin of man and woman, ask an embler, you know, um, regardless of whether you see it as just a story as, or as fact or, or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. The morals behind it remain the same. The, the teachings of any religious texts or religious um, oratory traditions or whatever remain the same, that there are morals behind the stories. And in this... Um, when Odin gives man and woman life, he finds two tree trunks. He finds an ash tree, or the trunk of an ash tree, and he finds the trunk of an elm tree. And he carves the ash tree into a man and gives it life. He gives it the breath of ecstasy. And he does the same for, for the elm tree. And he creates man and he creates woman. Man was the ash tree, woman was the elm tree. Now, <laughs> both man and woman come from trees in that sense. They come from the same goddamn plant, ultimately. The same thing. They're made of the same stuff. They require the same things to live. In this case, when there were trees, they needed water, they needed sunlight, they needed air. And now as human beings, they need food, they need water, they needed air. Not much changed, okay? But what, but what is there is equality. They were both the same. They were both trees, and now uh, that they have become man and woman, they are equal to one another. They are equal. There are no inequalities between the two. A man and woman are equal. And they should be. And as I said in ancient Nordic culture, um, you would have seen this reflected in their society. Women had similar opportunities to what they have now, if not the same. They had equal rights to divorce, equal rights to defend their own lands, to make money, so on and so forth. Now, the difference is, just like in today's society, is that they often chose to do different things than what the men chose to do. And you could argue, the, simp the simplest argument is, well, one of you is an ash tree and one of you is an elm tree. You're the same thing, you're a tree, but you're two different types of trees. Basically, the point I'm trying to make in a more poetic way um, is that we are the same, we are equal but we're different at the same time, and we should celebrate our differences. Men and women are not the same, okay? Don't get me wrong, it's the law of averages. The average man is stronger than the average woman, but you'll have some women out there who are stronger than some of even the strongest men out there, and vice versa. It's still the laws of averages, and that's where equality comes in. The women who uh, are skillful uh, and who want to do what are stereotypically man-like roles in society, you know, should be allowed to do so. 
that happened in, in Viking times, a thousand years ago we're talking. We're talking a thousand years ago, people had the chance, women had the chance to go on Viking raids. You don't get much harder than that. Most men would not survive a Viking raid. It is a tough thing to go on, to sail across a sea, to, to, to read the stars, to row, to have rationed food, to then hunt when you land on the beach, uh, and to fight and to, to protect yourself, and then to, to do the same, to just to get back home. That's hard work. And for a woman to willingly really put herself into such a situation, that's her choice. She was given a choice. If she was capable of doing it, then she had the same opportunities as any other man in that society and role. Now, it was rare. Shield rare maidens were very rare indeed, but they were still there. And it's the same in today's society. Women typically want to do women's jobs or women or have fulfill women's traditional roles, and that's not a bad thing. They should be allowed to do so. They should not be forced. No one should be forced to be in a 50 50 system where every job has 50% male, 50% female. That every you know, that that for every uh, housewife, there should be a house husband. Um. Don't get me wrong, there are circumstances where that makes the most sense, where the woman is the bread earner, she's the one who makes the money. But typically, most typically, and this is just fat, the typical, stereotypical family unit, which is what we see as the best unit in civilised countries, we want, we all aim to have a family unit, a mother, a father, and one or two children normally, Okay. Maybe a couple more. But the family unit is what is seen as the sort of the ultimate goal for all of us. To many, to, to, to most respects. Not everyone desires that, but that's what the social norm is. Okay? And in that, the majority of the time, the mother, the woman, is going to want to play the role of the mother. The traditional mother. Where she looks after the kids and takes on the majority of the chores involved in looking after that child. It doesn't mean the man's not involved. The man, I'm sure, will do a good share of cleaning up the babies and and feeding them and and you know helping where he can and stuff. But typically, in the stereotypical stereotypical family unit, the choice will be made where the man will go to work and the woman will stay at home. Why? Because women are typically stereotypically better with children and are better evolved to handle the demands of looking after children and all the other stresses of looking after a house and a home and men are quite good at just going out there and working and, and, and being sort of robotic in that sense doing the same shit every day and suffering and breaking their backs for it if need to be if they're doing hard labor in that sense you know what i mean now i've not put it across with evidence as sigrid Equinox um, did. She provided some fantastic evidence, um, articles from newspapers. She, she, she's, she's a whiz kid with this technology, I can tell you that for nothing. She knows how to incorporate all this stuff, whereas I just get a piece of paper and go, look, look at that. <laughs> right? But she provided evidence, okay? I can provide you links, yes, to, to, to certain arguments and, and stuff like that, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. All I'm doing is I'm trying to do a supportive video to say that her views in that were completely 100% correct. And those views are reflected in the belief system that we both share. She's a Nordic pagan. So am I. Okay? I'm proud. Okay? When, I, when, when, when the first man and woman were created, I would say, Odin made him, made man and woman equal. But he made us different. And we should be allowed to be different. There is no hidden patriarchy. There is no glass roof. There is no inequality in pay. Okay? Um, and there just isn't. Okay? Um, so this is for the extreme feminists out there. Because good feminists are what have brought about a good change in this world. Because in Western world... Um, Women were not equal for until very recently, really, in, in the long in, in the great scheme of things. And um, so, feminists was a fantastic movement, along with the suffragettes, for example. I admire them. Those were brave women, 
strong women. They suffered and they, 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 they just wanted to vote in that particular case. But women now do live in a society where they are equal. They're not treated equally, just in the same way that men aren't always treated equally. Because there are differences between us. Under certain circumstances, the woman will be favoured. In other circumstances, the man will be favoured. But that's just life. Get over it. Okay? Just get over it. That is the way things are. And... Let men be men and let women be women. And, you know, if... Women want want to do men things, let them do that. If men want to do women things, let them do that. They are going to be the minorities and they should not be looked down upon for that because everyone is an individual. Everyone has their own mindset. But let the majorities of us who are part of the majority be the majority and just leave us alone. Stop telling us that we're, like, like I'm down, as a man, I'm downtreading women. I am a massive believer.